Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Community of Christ Church here in San Antonio. And welcome everyone out there on Zoom today. Wow. Blessed, blessed to be here today with you all. And I, I will give you a little heads up for you all on Zoom and those in the congregation that weren't blessed a little earlier today, but we have some extraordinary music ahead of us. So it's a, and we got Richard preaching and we got Kathleen presiding. And so it's going to be a wonderful day. The Sacrament Sunday community uh, communion today. So it didn't get any better than this. Uh, for our, um, well, let's start out with enduring principles. Any behavioral bingos out on Zoom here in the congregation? Okay. But I'm sure we're going to get ramped up again. But don't forget that they are out here on the table for those of us in the sanctuary. And for everyone, they are out on uh, our Zoom site. So if you want to pull one down, hang it up on your refrigerator and play this. Please do. Please do. Uh, crafty ladies. This Tuesday, 10 o'clock. I get the head nod from Maryland, so I know I'm in good shape. So 10 o'clock, back here in the first classroom on the right. Potluck is set for the 14th. And uh, everybody that's on the schedule, which has been sent out to everyone that has the schedule, uh, please view it that. The responsibilities are on there of uh, different people over different functions. But bring the food. We all love to eat, and uh, uh, it's always a great time to have a potluck here at the church. Uh, Saturday, the 20th of January at 1 p.m., an hour to spruce up the church. So if you can make it, please come in and uh, help us spruce up the church. Uh, we have the cleaning folks come in once a month towards the end of the month. And in the meantime, we just kind of keep it spruced up. And then following that, on the same day, we have game day at 2 o'clock. A lot of fun. So if you can make both, please do. If you can only come for help us clean and not stay for the game day, please do. But uh, please join us. It's a good time. Uh, thank everybody that came yesterday to take down the decorations. Actually, it went rather quickly. Uh, Marilyn did a great job coordinating us all, as usual. And uh, we'd like to thank everyone for helping us take down. Oh, by the way, and see what Marilyn did up here? Yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Bible class, Monday. Yes, there will be Bible class tomorrow. At 7 p.m., we'll be doing, Velma and I will be doing it from our hotel room up in Oklahoma. So, yes, we are. Uh, spiritual exploration will be this Tuesday at 6.30. So, please join in to either or both, if you would like, because they are on separate days. Uh, with that, I don't think I have, oh, youth retreat. That's coming up real quick. 12th through the 14th. Right now it's at Cianito. There may be more to that. Uh, but Jeremy will let us know uh, if something changes. So, uh, but youth retreat is on the, right now it's scheduled for 12, 14. And the women's retreat is for 23 to 25 February. So glad to see you all. Glad to see you all in our many congregations around the country and uh, god bless you all and now i will turn it over to jim to bring us our morning prayers i invite you to join me in prayer
gentle God, creator and designer of all, we are here in this place and with those who are connected. And we approach this holy moment with open minds, open hearts, and spirits of adventure for life ahead. God, before we left to journey here and before we woke from Saturday to Sunday, you knew the concerns of our hearts and the needs of the people that weigh heavily on our souls. And we know that you have already begun to bless them, but we still share our concerns, the concerns we carry for them. Scott, for preparation for back procedure, Gail Kay, friends and family, um, or loss of her son. Journey C is facing surgery this week. Please be with Journey and, and family and friends. Bernadette W. and the friends and family, uh, uh, she has experienced the loss of a niece who passed away. Coleman V is facing heart surgery, please uh, attend him. And Chris T is uh, facing some difficult times, please be with Chris. God, we are also grateful for all the ways that you have blessed us in our lives. And even those uh, ways that we might not be aware of or able to comprehend. Thank you for that. Uh, and thank you for uh, the fact that we'll have been made at home safely. And with that, we know, God, that this is a new year. And as we go into this new year, we seek to journey with you through these days. So in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Tears of love and the 
Mama cried too. Uh, we're going to start today <clears throat> with a, uh, a gathering hymn. So I would invite you to please remain seated as we sing Community of Christ Sings number 72 Gather Us In. worship service of 2024 at the Shenandoah Congregation of Community of Christ in San Antonio, Texas. And it's also our first communion service of 2024 and our first oblation Sunday of 2024. Lots of new things, lots of firsts, lots of turning over 
a new leaf for the new year. So our service is wearing a lot of hats today. Um, I am Kathleen Cole, and I will be joined by a bunch of wonderful people today who are willing to serve and share with you. Um, we already heard from our pastor, Earl Anderson, with our announcements, Jim Burdick, who brought our prayer over those who are heavy on our hearts, uh, Cassandra Cole and Deuce Cutchall shared that wonderful song during our transitional time of tranquility and made me cry. Thank you very much. Um, Richard Cole is going to be bringing our message. Jenna Bowles, Deuce and Cassandra will bring our prayer for peace. Jim, Kelly Patton and Earl will be assisting with communion and Patty Walker will bring our disciples generous response along with um, an assist here in the sanctuary from Jenna and Jeremy Bowles. If you are joining us on Zoom today, welcome. I'm glad that you are able to join us today. And um, heads up, if you haven't already done so, now would be a great time to get your emblems prepared at home for communion. Ralph and Misty Warren have prepared our emblems here in the sanctuary today. And as always, we give a shout out and a big thanks to our wonderful tech team today. That is Miranda Cole and Jim Burdick. All right, I think I got everybody. Our call to worship today is a call to be our uh, authentic selves as we stand before God and with each other. We are called to be the light, to be baptized with and sustained by the Holy Spirit. We try to deceive nobody, but stand together, vulnerable, speaking the name of Jesus Christ to separate light from the darkness. Our call to worship scripture reading is from Genesis chapter one, verses one through five, starting right at the beginning at the beginning of the new year. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Please stand and join me in singing our opening hymn, number 98, All Creatures of Our God and King, and remain standing for the invocation, please.
please bow with me. Heavenly Creator, we're so blessed to gather in your house today. We gather both physically and virtually. We are all in community with each other and all community with you. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to open our minds, our ears, and our hearts, that we might hear the message that you have intended for us today. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We're going to do a spiritual practice dwelling in the word today. I will be reading a scripture from the 19th chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 7. I'm going to read it twice. As you listen to the scripture the first time, I want you to keep in mind, what is one word or phrase that the Holy Spirit impresses on you? as you hear this scripture for the first time. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, and what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. I want you to listen to the scripture again and ask yourself, what do you feel? What specific situation in your life today relates to what you've heard? What is God's personal invitation to you from the scripture passage? During the short silence after this second reading, I will invite you to write down what the Lord may be saying to you, or offer a prayer of thanks, or simply rest quietly in the Spirit's presence. Again, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. I know what it's like to stumble in the dark. I know what it's like to be invisible. I know what it's like to be unforgiven. Who will care? 
who will change themselves so they can change the world. I stumble in the dark. I've learned to be ashamed of who I am. Where do I belong? I'm invisible. I've learned to slink away. Where do I belong? I won't be forgiven. I know my need is too much for people. Where do I belong? Is, is there, there hope? Is, is hope real? Light illuminates the dark. Light makes us visible. The sun forgives the unforgivable. The dream is real. The thought that you don't matter is a lie. We stand with you. We will not turn away. You are at home here. We're going to sing a hymn of peace together. This will be our prayer for peace today. We will sing it. One of my favorite hymns, 285 for everyone born.
Well, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Kathleen and I, the whole family, we got a chance to spend New Year's down in the Valley. Um, and we spent uh, uh, Sunday in Harlingen Congregation, and then we spent New Year's Eve and with the Las Rosas congregation playing games uh, on their annual game night for ringing in the new year. And so we had a great time uh, down there. And while we were down there, uh, we had we had so many people that we didn't have enough beds. We had to take our RV trailer down there with us in order to have enough beds for everyone. And my mom's cousin from South Carolina was there for the week. And it was just a great time of just being together. And one day, uh, while we were there, all of a sudden there was this uh, heavy knock at the door, which is odd at my parents' house. People just walk in and out. There's really rarely any knocking. The door is always unlocked. Um, but there was knocking at the door, which was abnormal. Um, and in came Jackie Kiger. Now, does anybody here know Jackie Kiger by any chance? There's a few hands. Uh, Jackie is a wonderful person to hang out with. Um, if you ever get a chance to be around Jackie, pull up a chair and just listen. He's just entertaining and fun. Um, but as we were talking, he asked me the standard question that you get this time of year, which is any New Year's resolutions, Richard? What are your resolutions for the year? And I'm really not one who makes New Year's resolutions. Um, however, I do love this, this time of year because it is a time to reflect and it's a time to look forward. And there are different milestones in our lives where we get to just kind of take that moment and be where you are and look one direction and go, look how far I've come or not come and where is it that I, I want to go in the time before me. And so we ask ourselves the questions, what has transpired? Um, where do you wanna go? And then the harder question for me of the three is, What's holding you back? Where do you want to go? What's holding you back? Why might you not go where it is that you recognize you want to go? Um, and so while it's a new year and we can ask those three questions at the new year, we don't have to wait all year for that. One of the beauties of our denomination and, and in many uh, Christian denominations is that we're given the uh, opportunity to reflect on these questions each month. As we partake of the communion, which we will be doing in this service this morning, we are able to ask ourselves the questions, since last communion was taken, what has transpired in my life? Where do I want to go? And what's holding me back? And one of the great things about the communion table is that we get a fresh start to go where we want to go. And so I wanted to... Um, explore those questions uh, from a story, it's story time. So I want to tell a story um, and it is a wonderful story. It's, it's one of my favorite stories, uh, but it's not my story and it's not your story, but at the same time, uh, it is somehow all of our stories because it is so universal in nature. Um, and I'm gonna warn you, uh, there is a time of participation and interaction uh, that's going to be requested of the congregation as uh, as I begin going into this story. Uh, but this is a story, a universal story, uh, and it's from the book of Acts, one of my favorite books in the New Testament. It's from the book of Acts, and it's the story of Paul and Barnabas and Mark. Paul and Barnabas and Mark. Oh my, here comes the participatory part. Paul and Barnabas and Mark. Paul and Barnabas and Mark. Oh my. Paul and Barnabas and Mark. Oh my. Yes. It's a great story. And it has so many oh my's within it. Um, and so I want to tell you this story. And by the way, uh, that's the end of the participatory part. So you can now relax. Um, but it's a story that really has three elements that I want you to hear within it. It's a story of support, it's a story of forgiveness, and it's a story of redemption. And the story begins with Acts 13. And I want to share that with you. Before I get started, by the way, um, if there are any, if there's anyone here today who is um, intent 
uh, and very focused on pronunciation. Um, if there are any pronounced tears within the gathering this morning, uh, I want to ask for your forgiveness right up front. Uh, because in this story of Paul and Barnabas and Mark, oh my, there are many cities that are referenced. And it's quite possible, it's probable that I will mispronounce some of them. Uh, and I'll even go a step further on that. Uh, there are times that cities are referenced more than once, and you might get different pronunciations each time as we go through. And I hope that you're able to bridge the gap that I create as I go through this. So I'm asking for forgiveness right up front. And if we're all in agreement with that, yeah. okay, hearing no objections, I will continue. Um, this story begins in Acts chapter 13, and uh, Paul and Barnabas, the two of them, uh, went and sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. They traveled throughout the whole island until they came to Paphos. And from Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia. So this is the story of Paul and Barnabas and their missionary tours that they went on proclaiming the story of Jesus Christ and uh, proclaiming the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. And so the story begins there in chapter 13 of Acts, and then it continues on in chapter 15 of Acts, and I want to share that with you as well. Uh, and so at the beginning of this, it says that sometime later from that, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord to see how they are doing. Let's go back and find our friends again and see how they are progressing uh, within the word of the Lord. And Barnabas wanted to take Mark. This is where Mark comes in. Just remember, it's Paul and Barnabas and Mark. Oh my. So Barnabas wanted to take Mark also with them, but Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia, and he had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas parted company. Barnabas took Mark, and he sailed for Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas, and they went to Syria. This is where we get the oh my part. What happened? Why was Paul so adamant that he didn't want to have Mark with them? Why was this, why was Barnabas so adamant that Mark should go? And why was Paul so adamant that he should not go and that it literally uh, separated them in their mission and in their ministry? And for that, we actually have to go back to uh, chapter 13 in Acts, because there was a little bit that I left out the first time I read it. It said, uh, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues, and they traveled throughout the whole island until they came to Paphos. And from Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed on to Pamphylia, where Mark left them to return to Jerusalem. So they were in the midst of this missionary tour and Mark had been with them from the beginning. And yet, at some point, Mark said, I'm out of here. I'm not going to go forward with you. Now, there's different speculation on what happened there on why Mark left. And quite honestly, the speculation that has, I guess, the most weight to it is that Mark was not happy with the method in which they were ministering outside of the Jewish community to the Gentiles and had gone and talked to the leaders of the church about what was happening. And Paul and Barnabas got called back uh, to Jerusalem and had to speak on their behalf about what had happened and how it had happened. That's just a speculation. It's just a theory. Uh, but timing wise within the book of Acts, it lines up. But regardless Regardless of why Mark left 
And regardless of what consequence that may or may not have had to Paul and Barnabas, when Paul said to Barnabas, let's do this again, let's go on a, on a, uh, uh, a reunion tour, if you will, um, and visit these different cities, um, Barnabas said, yeah, let's grab Mark and let's go. <laughs> and Paul said, yeah, let's not grab Mark, but let's go. And they were both adamant in their stance uh, to the point um, that um, that they went separate ways with their ministry. So what do we see in this? What we see is that Paul had seen enough. He'd seen enough of Mark. I know who Mark is. I don't want him involved in my ministry going forward. I'm going to Silas. And Barnabas saw more in Mark than what Paul did. Barnabas said there is something more within Mark to be shared. And he gave him a second chance. And what did Mark do with that second chance? He went on to offer more ministry. He was a partner in ministry with Peter. And Peter references him as Mark. Uh, who has done good work with me. He wrote the gospel of Mark. And in the four gospels, the gospel of Mark is considered a central gospel within there in terms of the content that it has. And here's the other, oh my, part of this story that's so interesting to me. And, and this is the part that I love. What makes this story so wonderful in my mind is Barnabas saw more in Mark and Paul reconciled with Mark later on within his ministry. In uh, Later on in the New Testament, uh, he speaks well of Mark. And in his writings, he says, if Mark comes into your community, welcome him in. And then in the second book of Timothy, in chapter four, um, you might be familiar with this chapter or, or this uh, writing in second timothy because it has a scripture that has been said many times and this is a writings of paul to timothy and it's a very personal writing and he says uh the time for my departure is near this is paul speaking the time for my departure is near i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith paul knows he's at the end of his life he knows he's going to be executed he's in the pit of a prison uh, he has lost all of his freedom, um, and he knows that uh, the time is near in which he will be leaving. And he writes this letter to, to Timothy that we find in 2 Timothy. And in that letter, he goes on, just after what I just read to you, he goes on to ask Timothy for five things. Only five things. My time is near. I'm going to ask for five precious things. One, I'm going to ask Timothy that you come and visit me before I go. I'm going to ask that you bring my cloak. I'm going to ask that you bring my scrolls. I'm going to ask that you bring my parchments. These are important to me. These are precious. And finally, I'm going to ask, please bring Mark. I want to see Mark before I go. The story of Paul and Barnabas and Mark, it's a messy story. It's about people who are trying to offer a ministry, and yet they are struggling with each other, and relationships are falling apart. Life is messy. Relationships are messy. Relationships are rarely a straight line, but rather they have twists and they have turns along the way. And so while we might not have the same circumstances of traveling around the world, offering our ministry, we might not have the same circumstances of being imprisoned because of our message. Um, what makes the story of Paul and Barnabas and Mark universal is that their relationships were messy. And it makes their story timeless. They had twists and turns within their relationships, and yet there is a universal power of support, of forgiveness, 
and of redemption. We hear it in the story, Paul and Barnabas and Mark. And what I want to share with you this morning is that if there is someone who has supported you in a time of need, be a Mark. Recognize a Barnabas and support that they are offering and thank them and go from there and thrive. And if there is someone who needs your support, be a Barnabas. Support a Mark in your life. If there is someone who has forgiven you, be a Mark. Accept a Paul's forgiveness when it is granted. And if there is someone who needs your forgiveness, be a Paul. See all of who a Mark is and forgive them. And if you are someone who needs redemption, don't be held back by your past. Be a mark. Pivot. Gracefully and gratefully accept support and forgiveness that is offered. Chart a new direction and pursue a new path before you with a renewed passion. Because a second chance has been offered and redemption is available. I want to share with you a quote from Gandhi. And it's very short and it's very simple and it's very profound. Whatever you do in life will be insignificant. But it's very important that you do it. As you approach this new year and as you approach the table of communion that is before you. May you offer and may you accept support. May you offer and may you accept forgiveness. And this morning, in your days before you, may you be redeemed. We're going to proceed into the sacrament of the Lord's Supper at this time, and I'm going to be reading our communion scripture. It comes from Mark. Thank you, Mark. Chapter 14, verses 12 through 26. On the first day of the festival in unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened. And one by one, they said to him, surely you don't mean me. It is one of the 12, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the son of man. It would be better of him, better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many 
he said to them, truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. As we prepare to come to the table, we too will sing a hymn. I invite you to remain seated and sing 533. I come with joy, a child of God. Welcome at Christ's table. The Lord's Supper or communion is a sacrament in which we remember the life, death, resurrection, and continuing presence of Jesus Christ. In community of Christ, we also experience communion as an opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant and to be formed as disciples who live Christ's mission. Others might have different or added understandings within their faith traditions. We invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so in the love and peace of Jesus Christ. And now, as nearly as you are able, please kneel facing the table as Jim Burdick offers the combined prayer over the bread and wine. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all who receive them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your Son, and witness to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, and always remember him, and keep the commandments which he has given them that they may always have the spirit to be with them amen
Good morning. Let us begin the disciples' generous response with the singing of hymn number 176, Teach Me God to Wonder. The community of Christ is committed to being a cornerstone of peace. Giving our tithes helps us build the peaceable kingdom in such a way that extends beyond the borders of our own sacred space. It is an expression of love and discipline that promotes the worth of all persons and embraces the worth of all creation. As the words of the hymn that we sang earlier for everyone born, these words tell us, for everyone born, a place at the table. For everyone born, clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born, a star overhead. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. In addition to being a cornerstone of peace, our church also focuses on oblation, so we can help abolish poverty and end suffering. The persistence of poverty is not a reason to ignore the plight of the poor, but to draw near to them with generosity. Jesus says, because the poor will always be with us, that therefore we should be even more generous. I am happy to tell you that in 2023, this congregation donated $1,795 to food insecurity. We helped people in San Antonio to feel less hungry. And when folks are less hungry, they can focus on improving their way of life and moving forward. They in turn one day should then be able to pay it forward and help others. And the ball can virtually and literally become bigger and bigger as it rolls along, helping people in either small or big ways. This is how we can abolish poverty, little by little and day by day. And now before Jeremy and Jenna receive your offerings and tithes, let me offer a blessing. Please pray with me. All good gifts come from you, dear Lord, and from these riches, we bring this offering. Help us to use it for the furtherance of your purpose in this place and for the benefit of those in need. Help us to be generous givers, both of our money and our time, 
that we might make a difference in the lives of others, no matter where they live. These things we ask in your name. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service, I invite you to stand with me once again as we sing our closing hymn, Make Us, O oh God, a Church That Shares. And then I invite you to remain standing afterward as Richard offers the benediction and sending forth. into this new year we give you thanks for the year that has transpired before us for the opportunities that were presented as well as the challenges that came with it we thank you lord that we have had the opportunity to grow and we look forward to the year before us uh, praying that our lives might always be consistent with your wishes for us and for your children here on earth please be with us as we leave this place uh, that we might do so in safety, we might do so with a renewed spirit to do your work here in this community. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. And our sending forth this morning comes from the Doctrine and Covenants uh, 164, 3 A and B. All church members are urged to examine the depth of your baptismal commitment. Having been baptized and confirmed, be become fully immersed in the servant life of Christ. Live the meaning of your baptism daily as you grow in the skills and qualities of discipleship. Actively and generously support the ministries of the church, which was divinely established to restore Christ's covenant of peace, even the Zion of your hopes. At this time now, uh, we may join in fellowship. All who are online, uh, feel free to unmute your lines and join in fellowship there as well.
Can I just say one other thing very quickly? You know, I, I announced at the beginning a whole bunch of people that we're serving today. I failed to mention that Patty Walker puts our slides together every week. So thank you, Patty and Jim, who times all the hymns. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year, you. Happy New Year, Patrick.